What is going on guys? Welcome back. In this little video today, we're going to learn how to build a simple who is tool in Python. So let us get right into it. All right, so let us get started with the very basics. First, a who is query is essentially used to figure out who owns an IP address or who owns a domain. So if you see a website, you want to know who is behind that website, you can just send a simple who is query uh, for the domain or for the IP address to get some information about the owner. And maybe you want to do this on a large scale. Maybe you have multiple domains, multiple IP addresses that you want to gather information from uh, and you want to do some data analysis or maybe you just want to do this on a regular basis frequently so it makes sense to automate the process. And this is what we're going to learn how to do in this video. We're going to learn how to automate who is. We're going to build a simple who is bot. So just a script that gathers information about domains and IP addresses. And for that, we're going to open up the command line first and we're going to say pip install the package python dash who is like this. And once it's installed, we're going to import just who is so we don't import Python who is we import who is. And in order to now get information about a domain or IP address, all we need to do uh, is we need to say res equals so response equals who is dot who is and then for example, Spotify.com. Then of course, we also want to print the result. And when I now run this, you can see that we get a uh, dictionary object with some information here. So for example, the domain name itself, where the domain was registered, uh, the updated date, the creation date, the expiration date, um, some name servers, some stuff that you might be interested in. I think you also get uh, in some cases, in this case, not the city, the address, you can also see the organization. And of course, you can use that object to print individual uh, fields. So you can say, for example, give me everything or you can say, give me the organization, give me the creation date, creation underscore date, uh, and you will get the individual values here as well. So this is one thing that you can do, you can just uh, get a domain name and you can get the individual fields and maybe you can gather them for multiple domains. So what you could do in a data science context is you could have something like a sites list, you can say, okay, I'm interested in, uh, I don't know, some date prediction or some some mean of the expiration date, or I don't know what you want to do, you want to get some information from multiple domains, like facebook.com, spotify.com, instagram.com, meta.com, something like that. You have uh, many, many, many domains here, let's say a 1000 and you want to do something with them. So you want to say, for example, I want to know all the companies behind these websites. So I can say companies equals and I can use a list comprehension to say who is dot who is of the site. And from that, I want to get the organization for s in sites. So a use case could be I have a 1000 uh, or the 1000 most popular domains. And I want to know, um, which companies own those domains and maybe a company occurs twice or three times. So I would do that. And then I would just print the companies like this. You can see meta platforms, meta platforms already occurred twice, then we have Spotify, Instagram, um, you can see that we get easily the organization. And of course, I can do the same thing with uh, the creation date and everything. So I can say creation day to maybe figure out which one is the oldest, right? So I can say creation dates. Um, so I can first of all, just print that. But then we can use that, of course, to filter some data. So for example, um, there you go, you can see here a daytime object, what I can now do is I can say, for example, I want to have the first the first website here. So the website that was created or the domain that was created uh, the earliest. So I can say print sites, uh, which sites the site that has the index or the index of the site, um, where the creation date is the smallest. So I get the minimal, uh, the minimum creation date, I get the index where it occurs in the creation dates list, and I get the same index for the sites. And then I can see which of those websites is the oldest. In this case, it's meta.com. Now it doesn't mean necessarily that Facebook owns meta.com for that long, it just means that the domain exists for that long. 
So this is a different uh, difference here. And one thing that you might also want to do, I'm just showing you some use cases here because this video is quite beginner friendly. We're just going here through some very, very basic stuff. Um, but one thing that you might want to do here is also you might want to gather contact information. So um, maybe you want to find emails off certain websites, uh, off certain management teams or off certain support mails or something. And maybe we have a website like whatsapp.com here as well. I uh, may want to do something like emails is equal to who is dot who is s dot emails, which is a list. So not just one email for s in sites. And then we can print emails. And not every company has um, a lot of emails listed. So for example, um, I mean, actually, those are just domain specific as far as I understand. So you cannot really get uh, maybe I was wrong about this, you cannot really get support emails here. Uh, most of the time, I think you have some control over the emails that you put there. So maybe you can actually also have a contact mail there. But usually those are for abuse and for uh, domain specific questions, but you can still gather emails uh, for for certain use cases. Uh, with that approach. Now, one thing that I want to show you here is first of all, that we can do that on IP addresses. And second of all, that not always do you get information about the real owner of the website. So if I print, for example, who is dot who is, and then I enter the IP address 81.19159.28. And let's just remove all of this here. If I just print that, uh, you can see some information here, but you can also see that uh, you don't really understand who owns that. So you can see, okay, the domain name is worldforyou.com, and you can see that World for You owns that website, but this is actually the IP address of uh, Neural Nine. So this is actually my IP address, and you don't really see my information here. So you can see, okay, it's Austria, but you don't really see anything about me. So you wouldn't see that the owner is me or you also don't see that the owner is neural nine, my company. So you just see that world for you is hosting that. Um, which is also nice to know that uh, you don't actually always get 100% the owner, but maybe just the hosting provider. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.